All right, boys and girls, I did a video not too long ago talking about knives you do hand to your friends or people who are non-knife people overall. Talked about fun knives like this guy with the, uh, or the Andrew Demko or AD 20.5 with its fun shark lock. But today we're gonna be talking about knives that you do not hand to your friends or people who are not knife people. So I got a few examples here and let's jump right into it. So the first one for me is gravity knives. Now this right here is a gravity knife. This one in particular is the Paragon or Asheville Steel Phoenix. This one may look familiar because this is the same company that makes the Warlock. It's just the Phoenix is more of a one-sided blade even though this one still has a sharpened upper swedge and a uh, serrations on the back so this one definitely will cut you but this is the type of knife um, whether it's this one or Riate makes like the EXO and uh, there's a handful of other gravity knives out there that overall you don't really hand to people who are not knife people primarily because once again a knife like this can bite you coming out of the handle so if you're like touching it like this or if you make any mistakes this upper portion will bite you still so uh, you do have to watch out for that but also too these mechanisms are not the most intuitive and once you get the hang of it like it's really fun and fine to swing around and use right but for someone who doesn't understand how this works it is not intuitive it's not friendly and it does leave a lot of space to be bit by that blade so the gravity knife is one that you should not hand to your friends like I said whether it's a Riate Exo or a Paragon Warlock or Phoenix these are fun knives to have and I like having my collection I like it even more and I feel like I've mentioned this a lot but because uh, in Alaska there are pretty relaxed knife laws you can carry stuff like this you can carry everything you see here on the table so anyways that is the first one the next one up is auto knives and auto knives once again are usually not super intuitive to use or close and also to the biggest thing that I've seen especially not with this guy but actually with this one here is that some of them are very strong especially this auto adamus and if you don't have a secure grip i'm not saying you have to like hold it for dear life but if you don't have a secure grip this thing fires like a rocket and i've literally had two friends um, who were actually knife people still have this drop out of their hands because they're opening it you know a little bit more open palmed and it literally flew out of their hands so this guy is definitely a poignant reason why you do not hand automatic knives to non-knife people because once again a lot of people are not expecting that sharp snap and recoil and if they aren't they the knife stands a really high chance of being dropped so anyways auto knives are ones that are definitely a no for me now like i said there is a little bit of variance because this sng i would probably warn someone i still don't know if i'd fully hand this to a non-knife person but this sng honestly doesn't kick that hard um, it's very different from that auto adamus that kicks very hard so this one i probably wouldn't mind as you guys can probably see it's much easier easier for me to close this one-handed than it is this auto adamus so for the most part though general rule don't hand autos to non-knife people because they are just a little bit intimidating and honestly once again definitely can hurt someone if they don't know what they're doing the next one up is the otf now the otf is probably the closest on this list that i would say do hand to people because for the most part as far as intuition goes it's pretty hard to get bit by an auto so long as you're not like or sorry an otf so long as you're not like holding it up against your body and firing it you know you're not really going to get bit by this because your thumb placement and hand placement really has to be out of the way of that blade now that being said people still could put things in front of this blade in that opening hole or around that opening hole and get bit the other problem too is that a lot of people just straight up struggle with the activation of these um autos and honestly it's it does take some experience but i have handed this to people who knew and understood where the blade was going and they honestly like had to use two fingers like this to get it to to deploy or even retract because it was difficult for them but uh, yeah this is one that i would probably say don't hand to 
new or inexperienced people just because they could very well hurt themselves. Once again, too, um, oftentimes similar to gravity knives, due to the nature of what an auto or an OTF is, they usually have sharpened upper edges. So there's higher probability, more edge to get cut on, right? So these are ones that I usually don't reserve or I usually do not show these ones or have non-knife people play with these blades. All right, um, the next one up, we don't actually have here, but I actually might add one to the collection fairly soon, is Balasongs. And Balasongs, I think, are a lot like gravity knives, honestly, especially like this gravity knife in particular, um, where there's a lot of swinging, and honestly, most Balasongs, if you don't know where to put your hands or what you're doing, they are not very intuitive at all. I'd say Balasongs are probably the least intuitive knives to open and close, and because of that nature, at least one edge is sharpened, sometimes two or both edges are sharpened, um, or sometimes they have sharpened upper swedges like this. And so if you don't know what you're doing, you can very easily bite yourself um, or get yourself cut with them. So those are definitely probably the last thing I would ever hand to a non-knife person, or even I would say I'd make this claim that even if they are a knife person themselves and they don't have experience with ballys, I probably would not hand them a balisong um, just because there's too high of a chance for them to bite themselves. So anyways, that's the next one up. Like I said, I don't have it represented here. One day, one day, I promise, I will throw a balisong into the collection. I am, in case anyone's wondering, eyeing the Benchmade, I believe it's the Benchmade 42. I don't love Benchmade knives, but the Benchmade 42 is undeniably um, the coolest Balasong in my opinion. So yeah, I'm definitely going to add a Balasong at some point. The Benchmade 53 is the one that I want to get personally. You see them pop up every once in a long while, but they are probably the most knife-like um, Balasongs. Here is a quick look at them. But yeah, this is the 53, like I said, discontinued. But one day, if I'm going to add a Balasong, it's gonna be the Benchmade 53. Anyways, okay, finishing it up, uh, getting onto it, is the slip joint. Now, the slip joint for me is one that I think, for the most part, they are fairly safe, but this guy has bit me a number of times, and I do think that slip joints slash nail nick knives are ones that I don't like handing to new people because, once again, they're not entirely intuitive, especially something like this one that's a more slim profile. And two, usually, the nail nick is one of my least favorite opening mechanisms for a knife, so, like, you have things like a button lock, right? That can be depressed very easily, closed, opened one hand, right? But uh, a nail nick, you really have to dig your nail into that uh, point or like that little divot in there and then pull the blade up. And usually with most of these nail nick knives, they have very hard um, spring bars on the back that keep your blades under tension. So it is very hard usually to open these blades and it's almost always a two-handed affair. And once again, it's very easy to slip out of that nail nick and cut yourself on that blade. So these are my least favorite for that reason in particular. And like I said, this one in particular has bit me multiple times. So I can confirm, and I'm a knife person. I know how to handle knives most of the time. So um, the fact that it's bit me a few times definitely means that it is not my favorite, but that slip joints as a whole are ones that I approach with caution and don't generally hand to new people. Things like a shark lock like this, totally fine. I'd hand this to a person who's not that experienced with knives, just fine. Um, things like an axis lock work great, but yeah, not things like a slip joint. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned something. As always, God bless, and I'm out.